Hi fellow Webflowers and designers. So you want to enhance your UI design, but don't know really where to start? Here are my nine rules you can apply to every design to impress your clients. And watch the video until the end, because the last rule is probably the simplest and most effective. So let's get into it. So number one, use a darker color for your headlines than for your paragraphs to increase the contrast between both. Here you can see an example of a text where headlines and paragraphs share the same color. While the difference in the font size is fine, the headlines still don't pop out enough. Um, let's see what happens when I turn the headlines black. Et voila, the contrast increased. With this simple step, I improved the visual hierarchy of the design, what will guide the user's eye much better through the design. Number two, use a font with a good readability for your body copy. For this rule, I have prepared an example with four different fonts because there's a quick test you can use to check the readability. Use the font and write the letters I, L, Q, A, G. And the first letter, the I, should be capitalized. Um, you can see that I have covered the half of the text and in the first example, you can't neither spot the difference between the I, the first letter, and L, nor the difference between Q, A and G. But here in the second example, you can at least identify the A. And here in the third example, you can identify the I and the A. And the last example, you can actually identify all letters, even the even when they are half covered. Um, this matters because our eyes only have a couple of milliseconds to identify um, a word while we are reading. And uh, the more clearly the uh, individual letters are identified, um, the less we have to struggle uh, to read a text. And number three, use the 60, 30, 10 rule while using colors. This means you should use 60% of the time your base color, and it doesn't matter if it's black, white, blue, or green, and 30% of the time your accent color, and only 10% of the time your call to action color, or actually just use the call to action color when you are using your call to actions. Um, check out this example here. You can see most of the time I have used white, which is my base color, and only here at the CTA section, I have used the accent color and all primary CTAs um, yeah, have their own color. And by the way, you don't have to make a science out of the 60, 30, 10 rule. It's enough if you roughly stick to it. So rule number four, make use of well-known design patterns. This is the daily stuff people like uh, you and me are most of the time not thinking about because we are natives. But um, here are a few examples. When you click on the logo in the navigation, what should happen? Correct, it should bring you to the home page. And another one is uh, when you hover over a link or button, the cursor should turn into a pointing finger, like here. So this rule is about the common behaviors everybody knows and uses. Breaking this rule will probably confuse the users of your website. And by the way, if you find this video helpful, then give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I publish weekly new content around Webflow, Figma and creative business. And now let's get back to number five. Use micro animations to give the user a feedback. In a nutshell, this means uh, to make proper use of uh, success and error messages while using a form uh, or making use of uh, hover active and press states on a button, for example. See how these social media buttons here uh, give me feedback when I hover or click them? That's what I'm talking about. So number six, design with a grid and make use of the maximum width most of the time. As you can see here, I have again my sample design set up with components from the Realm library and a 12 column grid. As you can see, all sections have the width of 12 columns. But of course, uh, there are cases where it makes sense to use only 10 columns or even eight or six sometimes, for example, in a blog post. Uh, using 12 columns here for the text would be really bad because of the length of a line. Um, when the lines get too long, uh, it gets hard to read. So 
here I would use something like maybe six columns. And by the way, working with a grid doesn't mean that everything has to start on a column and end on a column. Just use the uh, width of 12 columns, 10 columns, 8 columns, and 6 columns, and think about them like your uh, container width, your ma max container width. Number seven is the law of proximity. Design elements that are closer to each other are recognized as belonging together. This means you can visually group elements simply by their positioning. Let's have a look at this example here. That's actually the bad example. Can you tell if the headline belongs to the image above or below? Hmm? Have a look at this version where I decreased the spacing between the image and the text and increased the distance between the rows. Now you can clearly tell the text belongs to the image above. Number eight, use animations on the elements you want the user to recognize. So this works best with your primary call to actions. Um, this is one of my customer projects. Here you can see the box where the user is invited to subscribe to the newsletter. The simple scroll animation on the text here draws the user's attention exactly where we want it. And number nine is probably the simplest and most effective. Use font scales for your font sizes and use different font scales for desktop and mobile. In this example here, you can see that I'm using for desktop a font scale with a factor of 1.25 and for mobile a factor of 1.15. This is necessary because mobile screens are way smaller than desktop screens. And if you want to learn more about font scales and how to use them in Webflow and Figma, you can watch this video here now. In any other case, I would like to know what rule or tip you would add to this list. So leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and as always, stay in the flow.